much on this superstar injury. I mean, half the roster is likely competing with some sort of injury right now. It's just part of the game. If I hear one more person tell me about how brave this superstar is for competing injured, I'm going to lose my mind. I mean, what we're talking about here is essentially the equivalent of a hangnail. I wouldn't necessarily call that an injury. Some might say that it wasn't a wise move for this superstar to step inside the ring with an injury, but I don't know. It's not like it's a major injury or anything. This could be dangerous. Caught off guard. Look out here. A second time. Beautiful technique. Look at this. Watch this here. Oh, here we go. This might be big. Uh, going to the top. High risk. Incoming. Here's the cover. Yes! Takes it! Ladies and gentlemen, we're here back in the broadcast table and now it feels like in the backstage. Specifically on Tyson Kidd's office, we've got right there one half of the Blackout crew members, one half of the tag team champions, and now he's speaking to Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd, I guess we have something to talk about. Because apparently, me and my tag team partner, we broke up. Blackout crew is no more. What? What are, what are you trying to tell me here? That cannot happen. You are the tag team champions, right? How can you tell me some, something like that? Well, the thing was, Tyson Kidd, the thing was, at the 50th anniversary of PWC, you were not here. So you didn't see what happened, but all of these fans saw what happened. What happened was, even though me and my tag team partner, well, my former tag team partner, even though we retained the tag team belts, what happened was, my tag team partner took the role of the entire match. And when the match ended, me and him, we came face to face, and you know what he told to me? He said, whoa, don't worry, bud. I can handle everything alone. That's what he said to me. So since my former tag team partner doesn't know the meaning of the word, the meaning behind the word team, I guess there is no reason for me to continue on teaming up with him. Blackout Crew is no more. Actually, I'm already signed to another company. What, what the hell? L let's come here to an agreement, okay? You cannot just live like that. You and him, you are the PWC Tag Team Champions. And that makes a totally different meaning, okay? This is a completely different situation. You're not just some random wrestlers. You are the PWC Tag Team Champions. No, Tyson. We were the PWC Tag Team Champions. You got me? We were. I'm, I'm already signed to another company. There is no turning back. <laughs> so, what am, so what am I gonna do now to the PWC Tag Team Belts? Now tell me. Tell me. What am I gonna do to the PWC Tag Team Belts? I don't know, Tyson. You do whatever you want with those belts. I don't work for you anymore. Have a nice day. I'm gone.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back here in the booth that's table and earlier tonight our cameraman was in another wrestling company called APAC Wrestling Online when they capture a match between Popey and North Phoenix Diana as you can see on the following image. starting to tire. This may very well be one of his toughest challenges in a very long time. This is what makes him one pin attempt. Will this be enough? No, a kick out. Yet. He's starting to show signs of fatigue. To be expected, though, it's not like he's in there with a slouch, guys. Well, he had to expect to take some punishment tonight. You don't step in the ring with this guy and walk away completely unscathed. If his he's fighting back here, I expected nothing less, Cole. Oh boy, he is roaring. All the way up and around the world. Oh, the old head scissor. Why do they end up on the announce table? Look out, guys. Oh, my God. The world suplex. This one's over, guys. Looking for the finish. We know what's coming here. Chinoku driver. Wow, I'm just as surprised as you guys are. It's over. It's over. Can Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome at this time Shagan. Hey, 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 ring, ring announcer, please, please. Don't you see what I have here in my waist? This is a belt. Well, but you're right at some point. I don't know where this belt belongs. I'm a champion of some sort. Because we all noticed last week that the reality is I found out this belt on a trash can near the building. So now I'm a champion of some sort. But the question is, where does this title belong? Well, in reality, I guess it doesn't matter to me. Because I'm not able to relinquish this belt. I'm a champion now. I'm a champion. And now here it comes Tyson Kidd, our general manager. You're not a champion. You're a damn idiot. That's what you are, Shagan. Earlier tonight, 
a certain general manager of a company called DeFi Wrestling gave me a call and he said that that title belongs to his company. So Shigen, whatever you want it or not, you're going to have to deliver that title to me because I have to deliver it to DeFi Wrestling's general manager as soon as possible. You got me? No, Tyson, I'm not giving anything to you. Now I am the champion. And I'm not giving it, not to you or either the Defy Wrestling's GM. Listen, Shagan, we have to do what's right. And I don't want any more problems to this company. Even though those problems are not exactly my fault, the reality is they have been happening. And I don't want any more problems added to my list. So you're gonna relinquish that belt to me because I have to do what's right and deliver it to the Defy Wrestling's GM as soon as possible. Whatever you like it or not, I'm your GM. No, Tyson, you're not my GM. You remember what happened at Kill or Be Killed pay-per-view? You said that was my first and my last match. If it wasn't for Ric Flair, I wouldn't be even here. So Ric Flair has my contract. He gave me a multi-year contract, not you, I don't receive orders from you, Tyson. You got it? Huh, <laughs> Shagan. You have to understand, that title does not belong here. And I knew, I knew you would refuse to give it to me. I speculated. So I decided to bring with myself the actual Defy Wrestling GM. He's here and he's coming right now. Well, and here he comes. Hey, you, 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 I don't know you, I don't know who you are, okay? I never saw anything about you in wrestling's television. But you're gonna give me that bell right now if you don't want to have any problems. <laughs> any problems? Any problems with who? With you? Stupid GM, you're just a GM, you're not even a wrestler. Who am I gonna have problems with? Huh? Tell me, who? Well, not with me, but I can actually call the police. What do you prefer? On put you in a tribunal section. What do you prefer? What? And wait a minute. Here comes Mick Foley. Mick Foley here. And now the Defy Wrestling GM is is looking towards Mick Foley's eyes. Like, is he gonna kill him? What? What the hell? What the hell is happening here? I fired you. Why are you in my face again? Tell me. Tell me. I'm here because I want to tell the truth to you. Well, you actually know the truth, right? But I'm going to tell to all of these people the truth, even though I don't work here, and I'm going to tell the truth. Yes, that title was my property. What happened was that this Defy Wrestling GM decided to fire me from his company with the excuse of me having a bad behavior too over the top. So of course, last week, I was so frustrated that I decided to throw that title into a trash can. So I was the champion. In fact, I was thinking about what I did and I'm gonna tell you right now to you, my GM boss from Defy Wrestling, I'm sorry, okay? I just lost my temper. I'm back on Defy Wrestling and I'm the champion, and I promise to you, I'm not gonna ever try to give that title away to another trash can, okay? I know that title is worth millions, I know that title has a lot of meaning for your company. I'm gonna be back in Defy Wrestling. No, Folly, no, you're not gonna be back because I'm not gonna let you. This is not the first time you've done something like this. You're not back in Defy Wrestling, I don't want you there. I don't want you there, you're not, you're not the champion. The reality is, no, no, listen to me, Mick Foley. The reality is, you are fired. You're not the champion anymore, okay? You are fired. Fired my ass, okay? Fired my ass. I'm not fired, and you know why, my little boss? Yes, Mick Foley may have been fired, but guess what? I'm back as Cactus Jack in Defy Wrestling. And I work for you again. 
And now Shigen is gonna speak. Oh, wh what the? Wh wait a minute. Calm down, guys. Foley, are you acting stupid? I mean, I don't, I don't even know your GM for anywhere. I don't even know what is the brand Defy Wrestling. But he's right. You did what you did. You throw a title into a trash can, a title that is worth millions, and then you come down here and try to act stupid? No, I'm not back as Mick Foley. You fired Mick Foley now, now I'm back as Cactus Jack. Stop looking stupid. What are you gonna do next week? Are you gonna come down here and act like the dude love? Or like the mankind? For God's sakes, give me a break. And now Tyson Kidd is gonna speak here. Well, I have an idea actually. I have an idea. You know, Shagan, I have an idea for you and for Cactus Jack. Next week, both of you are gonna battle over that title. And don't mind, don't mind if I wrestling GM. There is no problem on those two having a match for that belt. Here live on PWC, I guess all of these people wanna see it. Right? Yeah! I knew it. So, this is what is gonna happen. Next week, Cactus Jack faces Shagan for the Defy Wrestling World title. But here is the catch. Let me tell you something, Shagan. It feels like you're an egomaniac. It feels like since the moment you decided to align yourself with Ric Flair, you have been an egomaniac and your behavior does not impress me at all. You see? And since you don't want to give that belt away for any reason, since you want to keep a belt that it's not yours, since you want to keep a belt that does not even belong here in this company, just because you're an egomaniac, I'm gonna tell you something, Shagan. Yes, next week. You have the opportunity to be the Defy Wrestling World Champion against Cactus Jack. Man, man, that's awesome, right? But there is a catch, my friend. Because if you keep the belt, Shagan, you're gonna have to leave and work in Defy Wrestling. Yeah, that's right. You cannot be a Defy Wrestling World Champion in PWC. Unless, unless the Defy Wrestling GM allows it. Which I don't think so. So basically, Shagan, oh, you want to be the champion so bad? My egomaniac bitch. You want to be the champion so bad of another company? You want to keep a belt in your waist that does not belong here? You want to be so bad the champion? Oh, the champion of some sort. You wanna? You can have it. But let me tell you something, my friend. If you keep that belt, you're gonna have to work for Defy Wrestling, not for PwC anymore. Because at the end of the day, you are gonna be the Defy Wrestling World Champion. Isn't that right? And now here it comes Ric Flair. Tyson! 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 What are you gonna try to do here? Huh? Didn't you hear what he said to you? He doesn't work for you, Tyson. If it wasn't for me, Shagan was gonna be in another company or even in another job. If it wasn't for me, if it wasn't for my multi-year contract that I gave to Shagan, Shagan will be unemployed in this very moment because of you, Tyson. So he doesn't work for you, he doesn't receive orders from you, okay? The contract that was given to him was by myself, not you, Tyson. So I make the rules to my wrestlers, not you, Tyson. So take care of your little PWC old school. I'll take care of my guys in the new vein. Okay? So don't try to put here stipulations with someone that doesn't work for you. Guard. Have you ever seen a human being tossed like that? What do we got here? Oh, here we go. Got the shoulders down. Two. Sit back, people. This one's not over yet. Wow, I am impressed. Oh, here we go. This is not where you want to be. 
Watch this here. This might be big. Now in full control. Just a step quicker, it looks like. Oh, boy, he is rolling. Uh-oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, what a kick. Game, set, match, this one is over. One of the most amazing combinations you will ever see. Looking at it here. Down with a power bomb. That might just be the final nail in the coffin. The cover. And, and ladies and gentlemen, besides a pack wrestling, our cameraman was in a company called FSW, where Caddy Forbes and Jay Vital defeated the Friendship Express in an intergender wrestling match. That was on Future Stars of Wrestling. And we're back to this form of attack. Yes, we are. The same form of attack we've seen before. Wow, he's still down after that. Thinking to avoid that. He lands the strike with great accuracy. Strong Irish whip just too much here. There's no way to defend that, Cole. He's focusing on the face now. Oh, and did you hear the impact? Oh, there's a lot to hit there. Now the question is, is this going to continue? And if so, for how long? If you're looking to make a statement, job well done. Ouch! These guys are giving it their all here tonight, not just to entertain the fans, but to ultimately walk away with the win. Some very opportunistic... Hey, the shoulders are down! And the shoulders up in time. Well, as long as it's up before that three count, that's all that matters. It looks like that back is under a great deal of stress right now. Makes the cover. Oh, I don't know! And the shoulders up. And the match continues. I love this. Look at the attack here. Oh, man. Talk about a direct hit. When he gets going like this, there are a few better covers. One, two, We're looking at complete dominance. That's defending the... Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome once again Tyson Kidd. Yes, I'm back on the PWC's TV show. And this time around, there is a different team that brings me out here that actually I've been dealing with in these past couple of weeks. As you know, we are on the road to the Survivor Instinct pay-per-view, which is actually not only the last pay-per-view of this season, but actually the last show of this season before we go on to the third season of PwC in another town, in another country. So we're building Survivor Instinct pay-per-view and by this very moment, there is at least one match totally clear. It is going to be a traditional Survivor Instinct match with three teams, actually a gauntlet. The match is going to start off with PwC's new, new vein against PwC's hold school. My PwC's hold school. And then the winners will go on right after to face OWA's Calvary. Now, I guess Ric Flair and Anjay, you still have to tell me who are going to be 
your team members. Because like I said, we're building this match, we're building this feud. And do you think you're just gonna run away with it? Without telling me a damn thing before the pay-per-view happens? No, 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 my friends. I demand to know who are your team members, right here, right now. And first of all, here it comes Anji. Tyson, the reality is I don't have to tell you a damn thing. But either way, I'm gonna tell you. Because I guess these people deserve to know where the talent lies. The talent lies here in PWC, but the talent lives in OWA. So let me present, they are actually right here in the backstage. The OWA is Calvary, the guys who are gonna face your little scumbags at Survivor Instinct pay-per-view. First of all, from Spain. Yeah, he's a Spanish guy. From Madrid, Jonas. Then, from Garval, in Portugal, Bruno Afonso. Then, from Oric, Portugal Alentejo, the master of the Jinja talk show, Big G Golan. And then, of course, the last member, the fourth member, which is not other than me. I am the captain of the team. Myself, yours truly, Anji. And now here comes Flair. Tyson? Even if I would like to tell you who are gonna be my tag team partners, because of course I'm gonna be the captain, I don't have any names to give to you. That's the reality. Yet I don't feel like diving it. You know why? Because in the past couple of weeks, all of these people have noticed my guys training against each other in that very ring. So as you can see, my strategy is worth millions. Because all of my guys are ready for Survivor Instinct. No matter who I picked. So I guess at the pay-per-view, I'm just gonna come out and pick some of my guys at the last minute. Nothing planned before the pay-per-view itself. All right, Flair, all right, okay, all right, that, that's fine to me, okay? Now let me present you what I'm gonna do about my team. Both of you, actually. I'm gonna make something more serious, something more worthy to these fans. In the next following weeks, fans, you're gonna notice qualifying matches in order to take those three left spots on my team because of course I'm the fourth member I'm the captain of the team and I gotta tell you Survivor Instinct PWC's new vein you're gonna have to, to find out another place to fight another day and when it comes to you OWA if you lose that night, Anjay, and your team, of course, you're gonna be forced to let me do what I always wanted to do for these past five years. If you don't win the match, uh, Anjay, if you don't win the match, you're gonna be forced to let me buy OWA. For real. What? That's it. You either take it or leave it. Close line. These two heavyweights have worked their entire lives for this, and the night has finally arrived. We'll see who will claim the WWE World Heavyweight title. He's feeling the effects of that last hit. He better turn the tide. Extreme rules leave no room for error. Knee stop! That'll ruin your leg. Oh, 
Look at this. Northern Light suplex. Back elbow. Jeez, did you see that? Power from the suplex. That's got to be it. Just needs to do more damage. Waist lock. No, no. Belly to belly. My goodness. Oh, man. What a light drop. Stomping down. He's definitely being the aggressor here. This is what he feeds off of. Oh, my God. Pendulum backbreaker. Tick tock. As we've seen in the past, Extreme Rules matches create a type of hysteria that's difficult to describe, even more difficult to contain. Vicious knee. Gets out of the way. And fast. Ooh, jarring European uppercut. They get dangerous out here, especially when there are no countouts. Down! The Genoku driver! He's looking a little weary now. Things are not looking good for him right now. Big time clothesline. Good grief. Bringing it back. Boom! Right between the eyes. Teen off! Wasn't expecting that. Big time close line. Good grief. Carefully measured knee. Oh, what a DDT. This has got to be it. One, two, three. He's done it. He's done it. I can't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen, later tonight, we're going to have Taker and Sting once again. The Dark Creatures. Having a match, but this time around against Triple H and Bray Wyatt. For those who remember, Triple H and Bray Wyatt made a team last year because they were crowned the best wrestlers of the year 2021. And tonight they are back once again to join forces. This time around to face the latest stable in PWC, a very dream stable, a very dream team between The Undertaker and Sting. Now this is for sure a very powerful team, the Dark Creatures are here to have themselves a match later tonight, but for now, let's go back to ringside. Or better, not to the ringside, but there is something going in the back, so before we go to the ringside for more action, I received here a call in my phone, there is something going in the back. Miss Rosie, I got someone who wants to see ya. Bring it in, Piper. And here it comes, AJ Lee. AJ, um, wasn't expecting you here. What's on your mind? Well, Survivor Instinct, it's only a few weeks away, and I heard that many of our colleagues are assembling teams already, so I came here for a proposal. Lay it on me, but quick, okay? Quick, child. I have more things to do than wasting time. When I was coming here, I heard Luna, Mariana Kuba and Marina Shafir in a conversation. And it seems that they were assembling a squad for the pay-per-view. The point here is, we both fought Kuba when she was champion. Now, I hate Kuba. I can't stand her. Hey, eyes on me, I'm a Latina, I come from Cuba, I speak Spanish. Too much Gaga. And it makes me sick to my stomach. And you hate Shafir. You know her better than anyone. And even though you guys dominated UFC together at some point, it's obvious you can't stand her. So what do you say if we were to form a team? You being the captain and we fight those moods and heads all night long on April. At Survivor Instinct pay-per-view. Normally everybody who knows me knows I'm not that much of a team player, 
But you got a valid point there. We both fought Cuba. We both hate Cuba. You fought Marine in the past, and I hurt her too. That's why I sent her home for a good period of time. We definitely have something in common. Consider your proposal accepted. Great. And what about our partners? I mean, Luna may as well be granting troops at this time. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, my tag team partner. The War Machine may have won the battle for the title, but I assure you she and her squad won't win the war next month. When Luna started taking baby steps in the wrestling world, I already dominated Judo, Strike Force, and the UFC. I'm pretty sure everyone knows my value is higher than any value her team is worth. Besides those who are not willing to join Ronda Incorporated, will pay their ransom according to their defense. <laughs> Quickly into the cover with the title on the line. Good champion. Too close for comfort. Somehow she's still in this matchup. It's unbelievable. Double underhook applied. A face buster. Now she just here's the pin title on the line. Go. Two. And the champ kicks out. She kicked out there, but I don't know how much more she can take. Putting it all on the line. She wants to finish this. She can't take any more of this. Look at this. Going all the way up. Look out! Harsh impact. Quickly into the cover with the title on the line. Well, that was a close call. Not yet. Keep your eye on this one. Given their performances tonight, it's too bad one of these superstars has to walk out of here on the losing end. Look out, look out, this could be it! Samoan drop! So much for crowning a new champion tonight. One, two, three! With that, Nia Jax continues Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our general manager, Tyson Kidd. Thank you, thank you, thank you fans. Now, what is bringing me here tonight, as you actually may have seen what happened in the backstage right now, a couple of moments ago, specifically on my office, it feels like I have one more problem to deal with tonight. First it was Flair, then it was DK with the Colt, then it was Trish Stratus, then it was OWA and NJ. Now I have to deal with a new situation, with a new problem, one more problem to add to the list. Cause you saw what happened on my office. Apparently Blackout Crew broke up, Blackout Crew is no more, and now we have the PWC tag team belts in a vacant situation. Now what am I gonna do to those belts? Well, I was thinking about this on my office and it feels like I got two options. The first option is to start a PWC tag team belts tournament in order to give those vacant belts to the winners of the tournament. But then I was th thinking about it and I came to the conclusion that that already happened in the past. 
Remember when we crowd the very first PwC Tag Team Champions? There was a tournament for those vacant belts a year ago. So that option is not happening this year. Which leads me with no other option than to deliver the PwC Tag Team belts to the number one contenders. And the number one contenders are Jeff and Matt Hardy, the Hardy Boys. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me present to you the newest PwC Tag Team Champions, the Hardy Boys. And here they come, the Hardy Boys shaking hands with Tyson Kidd. Well, Tyson Kidd, first of all, we're gonna, we're gonna say thank you very much. We were waiting for this opportunity to sooner or later become the newest PwC Tag Team Champions. Now, considering that Blackout crew are gone, it feels like we took that role earlier that it was supposed to be. And from this moment forward, we're ready to face new challengers. Well, and speaking about challengers, here it comes Sanity. Tyson Kill, what are you doing here? I mean, you're delivering those belts, those prestigious pieces of gold, to these two idiots? They were the number one contenders, but what was the reason behind it, Tyson? Tell me. Just because they are a famous tag team among all of the tag teams in the world? Just because they can bring more ratings to your PwC show? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Sanity. The thing is, you don't even have moral to speak about this because you already wore the tag team champions in the past and you already got a rematch in which you lost. So you didn't, you didn't have the right to come down here and ask for a rematch clause because that already happened and you lost. Yeah, Tyson Kidd, we lost. That's true. We already were the tag team champions. In our rematch, we lost at Kill or Be Killed pay-per-view. But I don't, know if you, I don't know if you realized it, but we were this close, this much close to regain the PwC tag team belts. If there was one more second, we would have been the tag team champions right on this very moment. We were this close. Yeah, you were this close. But you know, let me tell you something. The if clause doesn't have any meaning in the real life. It doesn't exist. So let me tell you something. You already got your opportunity and you lost. And, and leave this with us, Tyson Kid, okay? Well, you know, apparently Hardy Boys are gonna, are gonna speak here about something. Sanity, we don't want you or either these people to call us paper champions or known deserving champions. So because of that, Sanity, I gotta tell you, we're gonna give you another match for the tag team belts. Two weeks from tonight, live here in New York City. But let me make something clear. It is gonna be your last chance. No more chances after that. Okay, Hardy Boys, but you know what? You know what? That's fine to us. Because in reality, there is gonna be just one more last chance. Why? Because we're gonna win those belts. There's not gonna be any needing for another chance. We'll see you two weeks from today. There's got to be some point in the match where those thoughts start to creep in that it could be over. And then you got to dig down deep, get rid of the self-doubt, and continue on toward victory. Oh, and he's still down, Byron. Things definitely aren't looking very good for him right now. And he lands a nice counter. Direct hits like that help put your opponent away fast 
and early. Ain't no stopping him now. Abuses him with an elbow. Look at this. He's going back to an old friend with that one. He can't withstand one bit more. Oh, he's one step ahead on that one. Comes up big with the reversal. Pays for that one. A second time. It's just a matter of time now. That should do it. He could pin his opponent right here. What a way to win a singles match. And once again, the Dark Creatures, Undertaker and Sting got the victory over Bray Wyatt and Triple H. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here back in the broadcast table. And let me tell you, last week we all noticed when Jose was trying to interview the Rated R Superstar Edge in order to get some answers about his betrayal over Randy Orton, the Viper. And of course, by the end of the interview, not only Edge didn't give any answers to Jose, but he was attacked out of nowhere by Randy Orton himself. Now this past week, Edge and his wife, Beth Phoenix, were in a coffee bar. And then out of nowhere, Randy Orton appeared right there again to attack Edge. Not even the Kofi bar's security could take Edge out of the building. It was a completely chaos situation right there. Randy Orton is taking this too far and very serious. I guess Edge should have been smarter when he decided to betray Randy Orton. Now he's paying the bills.